We'll start with the hyperthyroidism first. We'll just discuss about the features of hyper versus hypothyroidism first, okay? And then we'll talk about the causes and each of the association hypothyroidism. So what's the commonest uh, manifestation of hyperthyroidism? I'll just ask you guys one by one, okay? So, uh, okay, I'll start with you, Dr. Forkan. Hyperthyroidism, commonest presentation? Heat intolerance. Heat intolerance, very good, okay? Palpitation. Palpitation, okay, I, uh, very good. Heat weight intolerance, weight palpitation, and weight loss, weight loss. and? Diarrhea. Diarrhea, very good, and any other? I'm very glad that you guys picked out the most obvious ones. Yes? Tremors. Tremors. Okay, very good. And? Sweating. Sweating. No, not menorrhagia. Amenorrhea or oligomenorrhea. Okay? So if always I try to like draw a diagram and then remember, okay? So if this is a human body. So why have I, you know, like drawn these very big eyes? That has a like a reason, okay? So eggs of thalamus. Thyroid eye disease. Yes, very good. So commonest presentation is exothalamus, okay? Exothalamus, which can lead towards visual problem, okay? We'll just try to like give it two hairs or something like that. So it can also cause thinning of the hair. Thinning hair, okay? Now, uh, some sweating. So this is causing heat intolerance and sweating. Why the patient is like very sad, why? Because of the mood, the patient might feel anxious or irritable, okay? And there might be presence of the hands, you can expect thyroid, sweating, tremor, you have mentioned that. Any other thing? Thyroid acropathy, thyroid acropathy. That's painful wrist joint involvement, okay? So there might be clubbing present and the hand joints and the wrist joint can be painful and there might be some swelling present as well. That's known as the thyroid acro patchy. Okay, all right. So from there, we, if we go a bit upwards, like in, in this portion, uh, the patient might have proximal myopathy as well. I know you guys know everything related to the thyroid problem. I'm just trying to like, you know, like put it down. Proximal myopathy. Okay, moving on from here, general weight loss, this has been mentioned, okay? So there might be problem with, okay, diarrhea, loose motion, all right? And in, in the legs, you can get, uh, what is this? Pretibial mixedema, yes. Mixedema, okay. And if, if this patient goes for a knee jerk test, so it may, it may be exaggerated, okay, in case of hyperthyroidism. All right, and there might be edema present as well because of the thyrotoxic heart failure, okay? So that will be pitting edema. The non-pitting edema is more likely hypothyroidism. Pitting edema, all right. Here, the important ones are heart palpitation. In the pulse, atrial fibrillation present or not, AF very important to examine okay in thyrotoxic heart failure there might be lung crackles as well okay lung crepes can be present as well and i think rest we have discussed and heat intolerance we have already mentioned all right so from here if you just remember the entire person and if you start from either head to toe or from the hands then go upwards and then go to the face and neck and everything then that's how you it will be a bit more obvious to you the features of hyperthyroidism now very important thing that I've uh, not discussed yet for the thyroid examination. Which one is it? Carotid brie. But before that, we need to. I didn't draw the neck in this patient, right? So that's why I missed that point. So you should definitely check the goiter in the neck. You should definitely assess for the goiter. So we know that goiter most likely either indicates Hashimoto thyroid disease, it can indicate iodine deficiency, even in hyperthyroidism patient, Graves disease comes with goiter, right? So goiter examination is very important. And when you are examining for the goiter, you should check for the lymph node because uh, the, if this is the cause is malignancy, although in malignancy functional uh, hypo or hyperthyroidism occurs very rarely, 
but still it's very important to check for the neck glands especially for hypothyroid people and you should check for the carotid brie and uh, so not carotid brie thyroid brie because uh, thyroid brie is indicative of graves disease okay that that occurs because of the increased uptake okay of the and the diffuse enlargement and neovascularization changes in the thyroid gland which happens in graves disease okay so the thyroid brie is very important to look for all right <clears throat> Is there any special instruction that we give uh, before examining for the thyroid gland to the patients? Any idea? To look for the point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Point. And we offer the patient with a sip of water, okay? We give the patients a glass of water and then we tell the patient to take a sip of water and then hold it in. Don't swallow it as of yet. And then we go behind the patient and place our hands and then we tell the patient to take that sip of water, okay? Swallow that. And if it is moves with the uh, deglutition of the swallowing, it's most likely a thyroid gland enlargement, okay? All right. So what are the vice versa? What are the features of hypothyroidism? Okay, everything that I've just mentioned, the opposite. So like weight gain, low mood or depression, cold intolerance, very good. And it can also cause dry, thin, cracky skin. Also, uh, it can also cause hair loss as well, like, you know. And hoarseness of the voice. Hoarseness of voice. Very husky voice over the telephone, right? This is another disease that you can probably pick up on the telephone. These were also like, I think very overrated uh, topics we have uh, maybe studied back in our undergrad level because think if a patient has some sort of lar laryngeal nerve palsy because some surgical uh, complication right so that person will also have the croaky voice so there is no single way that you can tell from a patient just conversing him with the, over the telephone that this person is having hypothyroid right and maybe some people they just have like husky or maybe very high toned uh, voice uh, you know like uh, that might be a familial thing so you can't really diagnose a patient over the phone anyway I think we've read this back in our third year hoarseness of the voice and the other one uh, is uh, remember that pruritus or itching generalized pruritus it's a feature of both hypo and hyperthyroidism okay and goiter obviously another important thing is constipation constipation okay and non pitting edema for females menorrhagia oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea occurs in thyrotoxicosis and uh, in females menorrhagia occurs in hypothyroidism do not mess these two things up okay All right, so we'll start with what are the causes of hyperthyroidism, causes of hyperthyroidism. What's the commonest cause? Number one cause for hyperthyroidism? Graves. Graves, very good. That's the autoimmune condition, right? Okay, number two? drugs okay you're saying that over replacement with the thyroxine hormone okay or iatrogenic causes okay B before that uh, maybe some uh, pathological condition toxic multinodular goiter toxic multinodular goiter number three would be um, toxic adenoma or also known as the plumber's disease Okay, number four, dequervian or subacute thyroiditis. Number five would be postpartum. Postpartum thyroiditis. Number six would be iatrogenic. Number seven would be uh, ectopic source 
for example struma ovary and could be lung cancer as well okay so these are the causes of hyperthyroidism okay so uh, graves disease for uh, imagine a person has presented to you with you have diagnosed this person as a case of graves disease okay so now if the patient wants to know like okay doctor what exactly is wrong with me so what are you going to tell why the patient has graves disease this occurs because of the misdirected immune system because it's an autoimmune condition right so first of all this is an autoimmune condition and remember if there is one autoimmune condition you should actively look for other autoimmune association okay so if you get a graves disease in a patient look for whether the patient is having type 1 diabetes look for whether the patient is having pernicious anemia look for whether the patient is having any rheumatoid arthritis or any celiac disease or maybe addison's disease okay i remember it as like a very generalized um, rule like dat cpr this encompasses like a lot of autoimmune condition at the same time so by d i mean type 1 dm okay by a i mean addison's by t i mean thyroid disease could be thyroid toxicosis could be hypothyroidism thyroid c is for celiac p is for pernicious anemia and r is for rheumatoid arthritis okay so when you get one autoimmune condition look actively for any so there are several other autoimmune diseases but these are the most common autoimmune association so try to rem remember it like that okay so and just like any other autoimmune condition you'll see like the prevalence particularly the thyroid problems the prevalence is more in the female rather than the males okay and graves disease or uh, the onset usually takes place within 20 to 40 years so young adult people they are more prone to developing uh, or having the active sign symptoms of graves disease so in graves disease you will get all the features related to the hyperthyroidism but there are very specific signs that is only found in the graves disease but not in other causes of hyperthyroidism so what are those signs signs specific for graves number one exophthalmus so if you get exophthalmus then be sure that the patient is having graves disease and features of hyperthyroidism then be sure the patient is having graves disease number two ophthalmoplegia you might get lead lag or lead retraction in other causes of hyperthyroidism but in case of ophthalmoplegia uh, but in case of Graves disease, these two eye signs will be very specific. One is the exophthalmus and the other one is ophthalmoplegia. Okay? Ophthalmoplegia is basically difficult moving eye in different directions because of the extraocular muscle weakness. Okay? And this weakness results from not because of some neurology background, but because there is some uh, in the uh, extracellular fluid, uh, there is some glycosaminoglycan deposition in case of the Graves ophthalmopathy, okay? So that causes restricted eye movements, thereby causing the ophthalmoplasia. This is a very important topic for the FCPS examiners, love asking this, uh, this type of question. Okay, number three is, which is exclusive for the Graves disease, is the thyroid acropathy. And number four is pretrivial myxedema. So these are the four signs that you will get only in a Graves patient and not the other causes of hyperthyroidism, okay? Uh, so far, am I clear?